Hi everybody, uh, welcome to my fourth match of this year's online world championship against Bob Azari. So lots of things going on um, here. I just uh, finished the book and it will be going to the printing house. It will be gone by Friday. Just uh, some uh, final issues uh, with regard to design and uh, some minor stuff to be solved, but it's it's basically done. So feel kind of relieved. And uh, even more important for me today, I became the official. Uh, I got the official news that I am a super grandmaster now. So uh, the, of course I'm super happy about it and also proud. And yeah, really. Having a good day today. So, but uh, let's see how that will affect my play because uh, now I should fully focus on the task ahead and that is uh, playing a good match. So let's see. So I didn't check uh, Bob's stats. So I don't know what to expect. So we'll just see as we go, whenever I can, uh, I will try to comment his decisions as well, but since uh, I don't, there's not too much time, so uh, I'll of course focus on my decisions, but if I see spot something that I would have done differently, I will comment on that as usual. So I don't think he should hit here. Just cover and split would be my play. Cover the four, yes. That looks good. Four, three, so three is here. Should I hit or step up? Stepping up. So like inviting an attack, hitting. Well, I don't know, the 11 point looks strong. I don't feel like hitting to be honest, but could easily be wrong. But I think the 11 is an asset in this position. Even though I really don't, didn't like that I had to uh, step up into the attack. So could have been easily been that uh, hitting was correct there. As, as long as I managed to hit back, I'm doing okay, of course. Okay, yeah, so far, nothing all good, this place. So I think I have to put two checkers on the bar, try to make some progress. And I think despite all the blots, this is still too early to cube, uh, lots of things to do. Cannot do everything at once. He has got the anchor. Yeah, he should hit again, of course, now that he's down in the race. He is, doesn't mind a return hit. I think I should just try to step out here. Not sure. That's what you usually do when you are ahead by that much. And at least now, in order to hit, he has to give up his midpoint. Okay, I think I don't have any three, so 
I have to enter with it and it looks looks natural. Two is good. Well, this time I feel I should stay back, but I'm not entirely sure. Coming out. Just leaves so many numbers. But then what do I do on my next turn? So continue to hit. Problem is the three. Don't really want to play 11-8, but that minimizes returns and his board is so strong so that I don't see an alternative, to be honest. Now he fans, which is great for me. So now I can just try to escape. And also, that's still an awful lot of returns. Maybe I just should play safe for now and try to escape later. Actually, I like this better. So, okay, this is a hit, of course, nothing else. Safety one blot. So, um, the first three matches, they all went down to the wire to the very last game. Very long matches, so I hope this time will be a bit quicker because honestly I'm a bit tired as I told you before lots on my plate right now all good stuff but still uh, keep me busy so that's okay Only problem is the longer I stay, have to stay back, the better will be his outfield control. So the more difficult it will be to get the checker home. But of course, this is just a great number. So now the question is, is this a cube? I mean, I win a lot of lots of gammons still plenty of work to do to clear everything but yeah how what is what are my market losers or maybe i lost my market already i don't think so bad fives later on but when i don't i'm not sure i just double and see what happens that's just my general rule yeah, maybe prematurely, so I guess I will improve my distribution a bit. Yeah, ace is hit. So ace, five, I almost feel compelled to hit the third checker just uh, because if he rolls uh, makes the ace anchor that would be just terrible so i guess i gotta take that risk so so far things worked out really nice especially after double fours which clears another point And that's another great shot. Okay, four, three, seems reasonable. Oh, that leaves double three. So maybe I should play the four here and three here that leaves six five so okay i will play it like this also when in doubt 
I take a checker off. Takes two. It's taking more checkers off. Probably. Can also, I mean, I win a gammon if I get this home without leaving a shot. Maybe this is better. I don't know. But when in doubt, you should take them off, I guess. Uh, maybe I should have played six to four. I just see. Well, I'm glad I didn't, but that. Not an argument. Okay, important role coming up. Yeah, that was bad. What can you do? Just continue taking checkers off and hope for the best. Yeah, very lucky here. I guess he should keep the two anchors. Just give me bad, bad 3-1. Yeah, that's a good play. I hope I didn't jinx it. Nope. Getting closer, closer to winning a gammon here. Okay, six, two, all forced. This is interesting. So the three is clear. If I take one off, he can go fishing for another checker. So maybe I should just play like this. If I get missed, I'm still even. So that's still fine. Well, he hits me at least. I he cannot pick up another checker. But I don't know if taking a checker off, of course, also is important. So I'm not at all sure about that ace. Very difficult for me to decide what's more important. But yeah, that that blot on the deuce point would have been a liability after the hit. For example, then he could simply slot and hope to get hit. So yeah, because when he hits another checker, basically he has one. I think he still he still should slot, of course. Here, I mean, he has to go for the closeout. That's bad. I don't like that play. I mean, I like it because I think it improves my chances. So now, with all likelihood, the deuce point will remain open. He still should slot it, I think. So I think he misplayed this. I mean, this is just, uh, I just enter here. I'm pretty much assured of winning. So yeah, he should have played this much more aggressively. Well, that was that seals the deal. Yeah, two points for me. To be a bit careful, I burned quite a bit of time. I mean, I'm always aware of this now while commentating. So four points would have been nicer, of course, but I, mean, I won't complain, of course. <clears throat> okay, this looks decent. He's got a strong prime as well. 
So I don't think that this is a cube. He should make his four point. I, I think he should go for the solid prime. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I'm a favorite for sure. So maybe I should have considered cubing. Now that I got another inside point. So my market loses are pretty obvious. And I think now I should cube because I can hit, I can jump out. I have a strong prime. I will cube this. Even if I dance, nothing has happened or well, of course, I don't like it, but not the end of the world. He has got, got a lot of work to do, turn this around. So second dance is a bit, uh, yeah, now it gets, start getting bad, still very much in the game, but yeah. I think he probably should just anchor. I mean, if I hit him on the ace point, I. I'm still behind his prime, so I think he should have made his 21 points. So, of course, I'll go for the attack now. So, now I'm in good shape again. I think he should anchor on the 23. I mean, I don't see anything else, to be honest. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not sure what he's thinking about. If you make anchors on the 23, for example, one big advantage is if I roll a four to cover, I mean, not for three, of course, but another four, then I have to give up the eight point and he's at the edge of my prime like this, but even in these variation, variations it's much better for him that I cannot move my prime forward nor blitz him. So that was a very fortunate turn of events. So I should be able to jump his prime soon. Maybe he should just clear his seven because six, one, five, four. What is he hoping for? Double that I roll double fours. Yeah, that's a good play. With all likelihood, I will escape anyway. So he just should hope. Yeah, and that's another advantage. He kills his sixes. And like that he can has better chances to keep his board maybe that was a bit sloppy that leaves no that leaf doesn't leave anything so so i'll continue play checkers inside six four easy One, but not difficult. Okay, forced and got lucky again. He has to leave the anchor. What can he do? Now I have a chance to go for the close board, but probably I won't need it. Certainly I had enough in the race so that I don't need to hit loose. I don't know, maybe he should even go for the race because his shot equity is really bad. I'll just take checkers off because he will have to leave very soon. Of 
Double aces. Is there any chance that I can win a gammon here? Probably not. I mean, I think I can give it a try. But it's very unlikely. So with, with uh, so many checkers off, too afraid of getting hit. Oops. In, in the Galaxy app, you can just click on the pocket and the checkers are taken off. So yeah, maybe the hit was unnecessary because I won't, or the hit and take off was unnecessary because I won't win too many gammons anyway, but probably wasn't a big mistake. So good start. Also didn't burn much time on that one. Okay, in these situations, you almost always make the anchor instead of hitting loose, so not much to think here. Six, four. I think I may just make the juice point that uh, duplicates fours for hitting and anchoring. And he has a blot in his home board. So my inside point makes hitting a bit more dangerous for him. So Okay, great shot. Clear advantage now. Although uh, already with the, even in a long match with the four nothing lead, you have to be a bit more careful. I don't think I want to break my eight point in order to hit loose. So then that's the only play. I should have uh, according to the dice, but again, of course, that's not an argument and I'm Fairly confident that I should just play it more conservatively. Now, yeah, I can play with the extra builder. That looks a little bit stiff. Okay, that looks too stiff. I might be wrong. And what can I do here? I certainly won't hit. So is there really nothing else? Maybe I should slot. I mean, this looks awful, but the race is so close. Ugh. I mean, I will play it like this, but I'm not confident at all. This is just not the type of position with a race that close that you really want to slot aggressively. But uh, of course, my play was extremely ugly. So maybe I, I was wrong. Yeah, that's a nice play. He's exploiting the fact that I have blots in my inner board. So now how do I play this? I think I want to make the more valuable point. Race is about even, but since my checkers are further back, the two checkers on the 20, I'm the one who's got more timing problems. So looking for any excuse to run, but especially, yeah, that's a good excuse, actually. Best excuse, which basically wins me the game now that he's rolled, didn't answer with a big double. Yeah, this uh, score, I mean, yeah, no, no, even at the score, no reason 
take this with, with uh, such a bad race racing chances okay five two okay if i don't perform this could be his first point oh, okay that's enough to keep me in the game great maybe she should he should cube anyway since he's down so he's thinking about it very easy take for me even at the score so actually i'm kind of happy so that i don't get a difficult decision here not happy, however, about the two, three, so fives hit, so the four is kind of, I mean, it's bad. I don't want to expose another block, so I guess I just have to jump out. No other play that looks good to me. So, so far it worked. Guess he'll make the eight point and then I have a chance to get this blot home. Nothing else, I think. Yeah, he probably should blitz. Go for the blitz. Okay, I'm in trouble if I don't perform. So now, yeah, he rolls a nine. That's bad news for me. So he can hit me and bring a checker down. And I'm really in need of a five here. Well, not anymore. Okay, so that looks like a gammon win for him. So again, will be the match will be tight. I still think that uh, my take was good. Even at the score, so I don't have second thoughts about the take be honest just an unfortunate continuation Not quite sure why he played three to one. What was the rationale behind that? Gives him a worse distribution for the bear off, but don't know. Okay, some hope to save the gammon, but will be a tough. Will be tough. Lots of crossovers are needed. So that, that doesn't hurt too much. Okay, ace is clear. And where do I play the six? Maybe here. That hurt, but still in the fight, as you can see. But I need another doublet unfortunately unfortunately i do this is not it well all doublets play double aces included so that's the best that i can do and that was not it okay so down to a one-point lead. Mm. 
Yeah. Lots of hitting going on. Five. So now the question is, I mean, it's really tempting to hit on the 11. I mean, he has a one point board. I mean, that brings, uh, maybe I should have hit on the, I uh, know, the 11, no, on the 16, for sure not. Anchoring just looks a bit too passive. Of course, that keeps me in the game forever and protects me against rolls like a6. But still. So I really need to make my five point now to have good chances or reasonable chances in this game. So that's fine. Of course, I don't like the three checkers on the ace, so that will be my top priority to get these checkers off the ace. So I think he has a cube here, but what can I do? I have to fight for the bar point. And we both have all five points. I think my position is too strong to drop. I win the fight for the bar point, and even if I don't, my I don't think I can drop this. It's just too early to give up. I can make a second anchor, and yeah, my front structure is very nice. Even though with four checkers back, of course I'm in gammon danger if he rolls well. So, but it feels like, okay, that's sure. Oops, a great shot. Now I have improved my front structure and I moved my back checkers. So that gives me great fighting chances now. Guess he should just make the nine. No, that's. I mean, he's not playing for the blitz. I have him outboarded. I mean, even if this play works now, I think that was a mistake. He has a good prime. And going for the blitz with three back checkers and me having an anchor, I mean, I think that was the wrong game plan. Um, I hope I will remember to check that out. But yeah, I feel quite strong about this so much work to do so now I, I guess he has to follow through and uh, hit on the three and hope for the best I mean what else or I mean he can also yeah he can play this I didn't see this so three is clear I certainly give up won't give up the 22 so I don't want to do that. I mean, I'm not really planning to play a back game. Not enough timing for that. Yeah, you should cover his four, I guess. Not much else. Or, yeah. I know that's, that wasn't a good, that wasn't a good play, even though it worked out. He should have covered. Maybe I should duplicate aces and try to make my three point next. So that looks more flexible. So I have another shot at his blood, which is cool, but I better hit it. Now or never, now, it comes with a cover, which is even better. And he dances, still no cube. 
So now I think I want to have a direct cover for the three. And now I think I need to come out. And we have an interesting game here. Three one is easy. Good shot, I think. His three one is a good shot too. Now five four. Can I afford to run into the outfield? I think the answer is probably no because I'm leaving too many blots. Oh, he should have moved from, from his bar point. That was, was not a good idea. Now I can step up. That was a bad idea. I mean, he shouldn't be afraid too much to uh, move his checkers from his bar point. He has the anchor. Even if I hit, not a big problem for him. So now it's a bit more dangerous. Put him under pressure. So what is this? Six is hit another checker, but I have so much work to do. And I also have numbers that don't do anything. At least that comes out. And the four is here, I guess. Don't see much else. Double threes. Okay, he has to switch. So now he has to revert to blitzing mode. I don't think he should play six to three twice and 14, 11, that keeps his priming structure. Yeah, good play, well done. So if I enter on the ace, which I would have preferred over dancing, of course, then at least I would be behind a prime. So this has taken a big turn for the worse for me. Mm. I think he probably should have switched again because of the gamins. I mean, now he definitely should switch. I think he should play probably like, or maybe, yeah, Switch is probably best. Why should he take the risk of getting hit? So that was another unfortunate turn of events. Ah, so I, I get a free roll for an ace. <laughs> okay, that was a fortunate turn of events. Bad news, I'm behind uh, six prime. Good news, I can make one myself. So if he enters and I have plenty of time to make my bar, is there any merit in hitting that checker and hitting loose? And no, I think I just should play this and hope that he rolls an ace quickly, not a six, however, which Brings me back into gammon territory, gammon loss territory, that is. Certainly don't want to expose two more blocks, then at some point uh, I'm entering back gammon territory. Not. Don't want to risk that. Don't know. No blocks. I hope he rolls a six, like as he does. So now he has to. Give up outfield control. That's a bad shot. So six is forced. Of course, I won't hit him. Just hope that he misses, which he doesn't. Yeah, he should hit, of course, to go for the gammon. That was a big increase in his gammon wins.
Okay. Twist. Got my board, so I need to roll a five or a six, otherwise this is still I mean not the worst. Still a five point board. And I got my chance. Unfortunately I missed. Okay, so this should go out. Yeah, so without hitting, this is probably going to be a game and loss. Yeah, that's the best use. Okay, so I wouldn't say back in to the game, but now I got some chances. I don't really know. My plan is to slot my open six point as soon as I can. I don't know what's best here. Okay, he should just step out. Exposing a second checker is certainly bad. And so is 5 4. So we can play like this. Oh, no, not like this. Can play like this that gives me good contact if he doesn't roll a six so this is these are always difficult i can play something like this problem is he can just step into the outfield with small numbers he can point on me that still loses a game and I really don't know. So this looks, if it doesn't roll a six, that looks like good control. Really, this is a bit too difficult for me. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Or making the point, but then. Okay, I'll. I will just go with my instinct. Don't know. Well, he doesn't roll a six, which he does, unfortunately, still have some returns here. Which I miss, unfortunately. So I don't want to. Yes, that's max contact. Yeah, so like this. So now he has a little bit of a back M chance again. Maybe I should have just uh, but uh, I don't know. I think uh, I won't start second guess second guessing now. Yeah, he should, he should hit this one. This this uh, increases his backhammer chances certainly. Okay. Uh, now they are really good, but I got lucky. Hey, only lose a gammon. Okay, so still very much in the match, so two gamins in a row is never nice, but what can you do? Three, two. Is there really nothing better, but yeah, we'll just play it conservatively. Race is even, entering a mutual holding game.
Okay, guess I make my board. Not that he will leave any shots now, but how bad can that be? For one. Does it make sense to keep one checker on the okay on the mid? I don't know. It looks a bit more flexible. Maybe I should have played uh, six to five with the ace though to just make the four point and I mean I have bad fours so question is whether I should play like this but she looks awful I just cannot bring myself to do this so I will strengthen my board Yeah, that was sloppy. I mean, I should have realized that my fours are bad and like with uh, keeping my four points slotted. I mean, just uh, I'm, I hope I don't. I will look at it in the analysis, but that was just careless. I think I would have found the correct play with a little bit more thought. Assuming that it is the correct player, but I would have made the other play. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so race is basically dead even. Question is, should I give him something now that he has a blot, but feels wrong. I mean, he's stripped. So he's the next one to offer something. I mean, it's, it's now it's his turn, or he has to clear the eight. So that's interesting. Ah, no, I wouldn't do this. I mean, he's not even ahead in the race, really. I think that was the wrong choice. Should have cleared the eight or the mid and just keep the bar anchor for protection. That left him a bit vulnerable. If five three should I save one six? I think with most sixes I probably want to run anyway and I want the strong board now in case he has to give up something or leave leave a shot or Okay, why isn't he making his ten? I would I wouldn't leave the the five numbers here, just uh, three down, four to one. Hope for the best. Yeah, that's the correct play, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I certainly don't want to break my board. So, also that's bad for the my race equity. Okay, so he can play without leaving a shot if he wants to. So far he hasn't looked at it. So now it's 
my turn to perform so i missed that opportunity so let's just then a double, double pass and let's move on to the next game okay Nothing special so far, and again, welcome to the mutual holding game. So, it really makes sense to study these, although they look boring, because uh, you can make plenty of mistakes still these, in these mutual holding games, and they come up all the time, basically. So, uh, that's certainly an area, if you make mistakes or bigger mistakes or frequently in a mutual holding game that's certainly worth 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 uh, improving because they yeah come up so often so now we are i can scratch the mutual out of the holding game part because now it's only me holding him. He just wants to get home. And... So this is a pretty tricky cube because actually at this score, I have to be more conservative taking cubes. But the five point is open. There's plenty of contact left. So I feel despite the need to be more conservatively, to take more conservatively in a non germanish position, I mean, with the open five, feels like I can take this. So I will take it, but I wouldn't be surprised because of this. For money, I, I, I would take it in a heartbeat. Um, but uh, really, I mean, I have this score in the theory of backgammon uh, and in the holding game as an example. And the trailer really has to be more conservative in these situations. But um, I feel in this particular particular holding game, there is much more contact than in your standard holding game. So I feel like my winning percentage is maybe as high as, don't know, 28% or something. So that means even if I have to be more conservative, I have an easy take. So not anymore, but you can see still I mean, the open five point uh, is, is really important here. So, yeah, the more I see this, I think probably my take was pretty clear. So, it's interesting now. So this is interesting. I have 13 winners, after which I win some gamuts, not many, but uh, we can expose another blot. And the gamut value on the four cube is one. So it would be really a pity. And the thing is, I'm not risking too much with the recube here because 11-5, um, I mean, my chances are slim to say the least. So my so question is, how often do I win a gammon? 
I think I won 50% of games, maybe, because uh, okay, I can lose when I hit. That's a problem. How many gamas do I win? If it's even only 5%, then that would be probably a cube game value 1. But I'm really not sure. I mean, it feels weird to give the 4 cube at that score. But 11-5, what's my match equity? Let's let's ask that. Uh, that's like, I've got 14% or something. So with 14% that I'm risking in order to gain. Yeah, not, yeah, the, the gamins. Am I an underdog? I mean, he still can lose this. Wow, uh, this is just too difficult for me. So how many gamuts do I win? That's the question. So I hit, how often does he expose another blot? Probably I get the prime. Even against the two checkers in the outfield, I should win like a five, six, seven percent gamuts. I think my gammon chance is just not big enough combined with the fact that I lose some games. So I will roll, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is a four cube already. Yeah, I should have cubed. Uh -huh. So now it's only about bringing this home, so I won't give him a six. So and certainly I will play on now. Hope to get hit. Maybe I should have stepped out. Not sure. Yeah, how many gamins do I win there? That's the question. So now I think I just won't hit and let him crunch. Is that the right approach? Probably. I mean, there were some shot leaving numbers. If I hit him and he hits back, he probably saves the blood. So I don't know what's the right way to go here. Certainly, I have to stay back. Stay back again. And should I hit? Maybe. I think it's better than coming out. I mean, if he hits me, I'll leave that point open. Double aces is a good hit for him. Four, two, another chance that he exposes something. Okay, one, two. Should I hit? I think so, because there are numbers like ace three, ace four, that leave a shot to go for the second blood. Not very likely anymore. Okay, so that's pretty much it. With the gammon still I have to roll, no, no need to not give it a try. Okay. Yeah, should I have taken off checkers? I was just distracted. Well, she was still thinking about the cube. Of course, when you roll like I did, you start second guessing. So, uh, and while talking, I forgot to recube.
And of course, this is a big pass. Just forgot to cube four. So I uh, wasted, or not wasted, I mean, I spent quite a bit of time this decision. So now I have to be a bit more careful again. No need to panic yet. But just keep an eye. So I guess I will build a board. So I don't want to break my five, the 20, the anchor. So there's, there are not too many options. I think especially in this structure where the opponent has his bar point and the four point, it's really dangerous because if you leave the five point, get attacked there successfully, opponent gets a five prime. I guess I make my four point here, just put some pressure. That looks okay. Don't know if there's anything else. Good shot by him, but I've got my anchor, so I can just recirculate that checker if that ever enters that checker. Uh, here we go. And theme of the match, a mutual holding game. Yeah, he's ahead. Oh, certainly he wants to reduce contact question is what's the best way of achieving this I think making the 11 and the 16 is the way to go I uh, cannot he he comes from the 20 so uh, sorry I'm um, yeah so the day is taking its toll uh, talking nonsense here do I really want to play like this this looks a week. What what will happen next? Okay, I should. Aces are pretty bad, but at least I get some more mobility in the outfield. Also have return shots. Be hits with an ace. And if I had cleared that point, he probably would have been able to play uh, to the <clears throat> to the eight point. Sorry, good shot by him. <clears throat> now we are slowly approaching. I mean, it basically has changed from mutual to a one way holding game like the last game. Don't think he's got a cube here because <clears throat> he's too stripped. Even though the score dictates he should cube more aggressively in this holding game situation since he's four away, four away rule at work. I think that was not necessary to give me that shot. I gladly take it, but now since I missed, I think this is just clear pass with it, this deficit in the race. Especially at the score. Okay, let's just move on to the next one. Nothing special so far. Mm. 
And so I think I will slot my four. Don't want to strip my midpoint. Mirror, yeah, that's not a good roll. Eight to one is so ugly, so maybe it's nine three, nine eight. <clears throat> It keeps me or <clears throat> reduces the num reduce reduces the numbers. Yeah, that's six juices and aces. <clears throat> it's the purest of all plays. And if the opponent rolls a five four, it's the best for sure. But I think that was a bit of an overplay, but might be wrong. Yeah, now he cleans up everything, so but the race is close enough, so I want to just jump out. So that's another thing. His play worked perfectly. He couldn't have wished for a bet better sequence almost. And still, yes, he is a favorite, but it's, it's not that it's still having a good game. So I don't know. We would be surprised if that play was correct, but as I said, could easily be mistaken. Six, three. Yeah. To not get into trouble with anything, just clearing the mid. So he will clear his. And what's the race? So I will be down seven pips. Certainly the underdog, but nothing terrible. So that means with two big numbers, I would clear, run from the point. Sure. Especially now. Okay. That was not quite it. Probably should keep contact, just make his use point. Give me more trouble clearing his bar point. Oh. Okay, now I'm in trouble again because of my my racing chances, so guess I just have to make the crossovers for the race. And you can consider cubing now, however, I have a pretty clear take at the score. And I think he should cube now. Not a good spot for me. And there's significant contact and my guess is, I mean, that was a cube, a clear cube, because if he clears that point or I have to run first, he loses his market by a lot or in just, just in something like, after something like this. So yeah, I'm happy that I didn't get cube there. Now it's the easiest drop in the world. So six away, two away. I have to be very aggressive with my cube action now. So probably if it doesn't roll anything, well, okay, that's enough. That's a cube saver. I would have cubed. I actually don't really want to move my back checkers here. Okay, I will just slot my bar. Maximize contact and uh, chances are that I'll end up in a holding game again. How exciting! Okay, so I will keep all these checkers spread out. Uh, maximizing contact. 
still maximizing contact. Yeah. So how is he supposed to play this? I mean, most tempting is, of course, put two checkers on the roof and win a gammon. But the problem is, if I enter quickly, then without any outfield presence, he'll have a very hard time getting this his checkers home. So, yeah, for example, now he's in trouble. Not that I can cube here after he plays 14-6. So, of course, I hit and make my bar. And, of course, he hits back. So, I really want to roll the 4 here. Certainly not 6-3. Uh, it's a bit risky. Okay, that's good. I mustn't expose that lot, I think, so that he can point on me. He will have difficulties cleaning up his blots and escape, but he wrote one of the few numbers that actually does to all these things. But I got lucky. I have a good holding game again. So I don't know how many times I used the term holding game by now, but that's my world right now. So an early shot in this holding game. Certainly one of my better holding games here. Okay, so certainly won't reuse contact just yet so way down in the race but lots of contact left hmm. okay okay so after the roll i uh, my pip count is 95 still down in the race but not by that much so if i play like this I mean, what's the alternative? I can produce some dead checkers. I can do that. I feel like there's so much contact left. Just hit him. I mean, just hate to convert this into a bad race. So I will just go for the contact he stripped. I mean, you can see the trouble he's in if I just maintain contact. Yeah, so he has to lift. Okay, so big roll now for him. Well, big roll now for me. Was the gammon trap? Uh, <laughs> okay. I think he should hit loose. I mean, he should go now. He should be in full gammon mode now. Just finish me off. Certainly the best play here. Yes, good choice. And rewarded. Now he should hit the third checker think. I mean, Gammon is really valuable for him. I would have hit the checker now. The open spots may never hit it. Okay, he also may close the board, but he won't hit the checker. So, yeah, my chances of saving this and uh, I don't know. I, I won't speculate. It's completely useless, that speculation. 
Well, my ch chances are not good. I can tell you that. So that's my last shot at this. Missed it. And good for him. Guess I can say thank you already. That was a, after a good start. Isn't really much left. Curious to see how I played, as I said. Had a lot of my plate today and days before. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that was a good match. Happy about it. Not about the outcome, but let's look at my mistakes. So while the XG analysis uh, was running, I was replying to some congratulations on uh, Facebook. So I uh, got a big response uh, from the backgammon community on Facebook. Uh, uh, the title, the Super Grandmaster title that is, and I'm really happy that uh, people appreciate it and that, uh, yeah. Feels like I'm getting a lot of support. That's always great. And that's an additional motivation for me to give something back to the community. Okay, so I have to admit it. I'm a bit tired, so uh, maybe I will cut this analysis short, but let's see. I'll suddenly will browse through my blunders and if I see anything else. Oh, well, so that's one of his, so I uh, won't comment too much on all this. So, okay, so there is something coming up. Okay, uh, yeah, that's that's a tough play to make. So XG wants me to keep my 11 point for structure and leave uh, tons of shots. Uh, I was afraid of the strong board but I can see that even if I get hit with so many checkers back and my structure, I still have decent chances. So yeah, don't fault myself too much for this play, but yeah, it didn't have the guts to be honest. Oh, that was, okay, so I totally miss, uh, miss uh, evaluate this position. I thought, how bad can it be? That this is probably ending up in a 5-3 back game. So my plan was actually to attack on the ace. And yeah, but it's so inflexible. So I'm barely a favorite. In tons of gammons. And yeah, just not too many market losers. That shows you how strong these back games are. Yeah, especially I will get get into trouble if I start rolling threes and fives. So yeah, that's just... I underestimated my terrible structure, only saw the upside. I mean, the upside is obvious, 34% uh, gammons, uh, but yeah. Okay, so yeah, got to learn from that. So there was one play where he didn't cover. Yeah, here, that's that play. As expected, that's a sizable mistake. Yeah, and the other one that I criticized uh not going for the prime that's not that bad but yeah i mean his structure requires a priming approach actually so i mean that was the fa play i favored and that was the wrong game plan uh, wasn't that bad but yeah he should have just covered and that one was an overplay i should have just strengthened my board going for the weaker inner board point immediately because in case he has to leave something i want to have my board strong so i should have played just made my dues that was a little bit like uh, as they say in poker fancy play syndrome my I instinctively, instinctively wanted to make the correct move, and then I saw things that were not there. 
got too creative here, Kai. Yeah, that was that was another. I mean, don't do these this these plays. I mean, after the play that that is correct here with the three one, there's actually not much he needs to be afraid of. Yes, I can hit with an ace, but then I have to break my eight point and his big favorite to enter before I can release my back checker. So, and uh, burying a checker on the deuce really hurts his position. But I talked about it already. Yeah, the five four, yeah, I don't know these things. Actually, I should have made the nine win small games. I was playing for his small numbers. Yeah. yeah. Again, probably just making the nine is the more natural play. But then I saw a double eight, double uses and two one that hit me there, but so what? So yeah. I mean, difficult decision, but I think on really good day, I could get this right again. Uh, I should have just stuck with the natural play, but because I think that making the nine is natural. Okie doke. Understood. Another overplay, because in these mutual holy games where the race is really close, uh, you should go. I mean, when in doubt, just make the safe play because the hit really hurts when the opponent already has a strong board. Again, a little bit got a little bit too, became a little bit too fancy. And then, well, we'll look this one completely. I mean, yeah, that was just nonsense. I mean, this is an oversight. Okay, I mean. It's obvious that I need to strengthen my board. He, he can't afford to hit with the three. And when I have the weak board, I don't know what I was thinking uh, by weakening my board. I mean, this this checker on the 10 after the correct play is as safe as it gets because uh, with, I mean, if he rolls like a, three, four or something. Is he gonna hit with my five point board? So yeah, that was that was bad and I just didn't see it. So Mea culpa. So then he missed the cube. Yeah, these what was the score? Eight away five away. Yeah, small cube. Yeah, so market loses. I weakened my board, so yeah. That uh allows him to cube, but he didn't. Okay, he made my play here. And he should have volunteered. So that's interesting. I thought, okay, let's, let's, let's look at this. So he should have volunteered, uh, certainly with the argument, uh, if he survives, he can cube me and he's a big favorite to do so. But why is this? I don't know why this play, his move is not on plus plus. No idea. So that's his move. Should have been on plus plus. Or maybe I did something here. So yeah, this is pretty far away still from a cube. Uh, basically, no matter what I roll. So yeah. It actually wins more games, so that's the DMP play. But with the cube in mind, he should have taken that little risk. Yeah, I knew it. Uh, let's check out my gammons, yeah. 5% uh, gammon wins, and with a gammon value of 1 is enough to even cube as an underdog. Uh, in one of my recent or not so recent videos, I made, made a huge mistake in the similar spot. Uh, so I was a little bit more scared, but it's all about these 5% gammon wins and the huge volatility. So yeah, a uh, good example of uh, score adjustments. And uh, yeah, it's only a 40 mistake, but uh, yeah, it was itching to cube here, but I don't fault myself too much. What else? Um, 
it's yeah, same mistake again. Yeah, we we had basically a mutual holding game every game, and as I mentioned in while playing, uh, plenty of potential for mistakes, even though they look so uh, boring and uneventful, basically. But again, I violated the rule uh, to just uh, leave a shot without really needing to when he already has a really strong structure. So it's just an invitation for him to run off his bar point, uh, of my bar point. When he rolls an ace, so I should just, so I made the deuce point. Looks like this, looks nicer, more pleasing to the eye, but that play was required, not a super big mistake. And I think I talked about the cube that he missed. First of all, he missed the cube. Um, that was, was that one of these four away cubes? Uh, he has to cube more aggressively, and once he clears the point, he loses his market. So, especially since he hadn't, hasn't cubed, I mean, even with the cube given, he just should have played safe, but, in, I mean, clearing his eight gives him good structure, and uh, when you look at the final position after clearing the eight, I'm also kind of running out of time. So let me roll some sixes, the big numbers, so I have to give up something. So that was just an invitation for me. Fortunately, I wasn't able to accept. And, uh, oh, it's even a closer pass than I thought. I, I bet at the score, XG is not good at these scores in mutual holding game. That pass is gonna get bigger. So I'm almost tempted to make a super quick rollout. Should be a full rollout is required. So I will just roll out some games. And if it's then still a take, then I take everything back. So just give me like five seconds more and rollout is running. You cannot see it, but just to... I mean, I mentioned it already in various videos, how bad XG is in these type of situation at these particular scores. So I think I can interrupt, interrupt the rollout now. So you can see with a, how oh, with a hundred percent confidence, XG now says it's a pass. So uh, no surprises here. Ah, oh, XG is not good at this. Okay, so I was just too focused on maintaining contact. Three pips. Should have taken my chances in the race. It just looked so tempting with all his trip points. But in the end, what I hit the shot and as a reward, I lost the gammon. And here just to wrap it up here, uh, the analysis as I thought, he should have simply should have hit the third checker and that even wins more games. I mean, with three checkers on the roof, my home board is not very strong, especially with my dad checker. So he should have, should have played more aggressively for the gammon, but he won it anyway, good for him. Um, so that was the Super Grandmaster video. Uh, yeah. So I think I will just celebrate a little bit now. Uh, couldn't do that before. Maybe have a glass of wine. Uh, really happy day for me. Um, so as always, um, if you liked the content of this video and if it was helpful, please press the corresponding button and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, bye-bye.